for. Before we start to train your main breathing apparatus, your diaphragm, the, the intercostals, we have to see what your, bra your breathing capacity is. We, are, mm -hmm. we have to see how long you can hold your breath if you're breathing correctly from the belly. So the first thing, we're gonna do a high low test or chest belly test. One hand here, one hand here. Start taking normal breath and you let me know if you're breathing from below or you're breathing from above. This is your own self-assessment. So, Emily. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm not thinking about it, I breathe from more of my chest than okay. neck. But you're aware of it? Yes. That's I'm good. Mr. Anton? Feels like my stomach. Okay. Yes. That's the first one. So, better awareness, but you're still breathing from here when you're not aware. Yeah. And you are breathing from your belly. It feels like it. Okay. So this is going to be a breathing capacity assessment. Okay. You're going to breathe normally. When you're ready, hold your breath, breathe in, watch the clock. The moment you start to breathe in or out, you're going to let me know. Give me your time. Okay. Jack is. What'd you get? One minute, 10 seconds. Ooh. <laughs> Does he swim or dive? <laughs> Not that I know of. You should. No, I'm sorry, close. Wow. That's crazy. <sighs> what did you get? 130. All right, we are doing the high-low or chest-belly screen in a supine or on the back position. Being horizontal is a lot less aggressive than vertical with this. So let's see if anything changes. Emily, since you were the one with the minimal dysfunction. I'm finding it much easier to breathe from my belly. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay, let's go into the training. We're going to do the breathing training step by step. And the first is just putting, we already know that you, you should be breathing from the belly from the front. Now let's put your hands around the ribs like a caliper. It's not adequate just to breathe from the front. I want some lateral excursion and also laterally, right and left symmetrically. And Emily, I'm gonna have you wrap them around so fingers up in front and the lower the thumbs going towards one another. And you let me know what you're feeling. Do you have breath work from the sides? And is the breath work symmetrical? If you got it, just put your thumbs up in the air and we'll go to the next step. If you don't, this is gonna be your training. If you can't master frontal or, thank you, Emily, both lateral breathing. So until Anton gets there, Emily, I'm gonna have you put your hands small of your back. Mm -hmm. And you can have palms down, yes. How are you doing, Anton? Feels like the right side is expanding more than the left. Then apply a little pressure with your left, right in the small spot, so below that rib, a little lower, and use that as resistance, like you're lifting, and Breathe into it. So we're going to load. Oh yeah, that definitely is. And Emily, since you're a little bit more advanced than Anton, breathe into your lower back. It's more of awareness. You're gonna feel a little bit of expansion in your lower back and your back flattening a bit. Not as much as laterally, not as much as in front. So we're looking to establish circumferential breathing, breathing from around the column. I don't call it a core, it's a column. You have a front, back, and side, and also a top and bottom to your column. Yeah, now I'm feeling it. All right, now you can go into the position that Emily is in and have your fingertips underneath your back, mm -hmm, palms down, and try to breathe into your fingers. If you don't feel it, press your fingers gently into your lower back and sacrum and breathe into it. And Emily, if you have that one, you can put your hands on the front again. So just always give me your, give me your thumbs up when you, uh, yes, when you have gotten the movement. I think I have to be more aware of my left side working. Like Anton. Right, otherwise it... Then again, you can apply a little more pressure on your left and breathe into it. Once you got that movement or that section of the breath work 101, just put the thumbs up. So we focused on making sure you were breathing from the belly. We're focusing on circumferential breathing. And once we get past circumferential, we'll start doing belly rib breathing. Belly first, then the ribs. I feel the back. Okay. 
it's not it's subtle, but I feel it. I'm gonna replace this right yeah, right here. And a little bit higher in here. So your ribs start in here. Close the fingers. And when you breathe in, again it's belly, circumferential, and then the ribs up here start to go. So bottom fingers first and top fingers and thumbs start to expand. We are advancing from circumferential breathing to belly rib breathing. Belly first, and then the ribs above. It's right, one right after the other. You can put your hands by your side, palms up. Now that you have the inhalation, exhalation, you have circumferential breathing, you have belly rib. Let's practice some abdominal bracing. Because as I said, the core or the column is front, back, and sides. It's the bottom and the top. We're, we've already worked on circumferential contraction and expansion. The diaphragm from the deep breathing, that's the top part of your core or column. Now we have to get the bottom part, the pelvic floor. When you exhale, I want you to gently take your tailbone and tuck it under. When you exhale, Gently take your tailbone and tuck under. Now, take your fingertips and put them right uh, to the right and left of your belly button or navel or umbilicus, umbilicus. When you exhale, you should feel those muscles contract. So in essence, when you contract your tail, when you tuck your tailbone, you are using the pelvic floor muscles because the pelvic floor muscles help tuck that tailbone bring it toward your face, but it also helps you engage some of your deep abdominal muscles. So you get two for one. <laughs> Let me know when you feel the contraction to the right and left side of your, of your navel, when you exhale and tuck your tail. Okay, Anton has it. Goody. Okay, now you can put the hands back to your side. Now we're going to practice some tempo breathing. So right now I want you to just, just practice four seconds in, pause, four seconds out and pause. Don't forget the sequence, belly, rib. Don't forget to breathe in laterally to your left because that's your dysfunctional side and to breathe into your back. Once you are able to do the four seconds pause, four seconds pause, let's move on to the next one. Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Now we're going to do some box breathing. Four seconds inhale, hold four seconds, four seconds exhale, hold four seconds. And with this, don't worry about the tailbone tuck, just get the temple. We'll, uh, we'll add the tailbone tuck and the abdominal bracing shortly. Once you can do the box breathing, let me know. Do you have your box breathing? Yes. Let's try making this a little bit more difficult. This is called crocodile breathing. You're going to lay on your stomach. And to make it easier, you can have your fingertips underneath your forehead. This is a heavy, heavy block. Mm. No, it's <laughs> a yoga block. When you breathe in, the block should raise up in the air. When you breathe in, the yoga block on your lower back should raise up in the air, not the chest or thoracic region. You're going to be belly breathing, but now you have resistance, your body weight. Mm -hmm. So your belly is actually going to raise your body up in the air. This is going to be harder for you, Emily, because you, it was easier for you. It was easier for you on your back, harder for you vertical sitting, and now you have resistance that your diaphragm, your intercostals, mm -hmm. your abdominals have to work against. So in essence, they have to generate more force to get the air in. Exhalation is gonna be easier because of just gravity and the re recoil of those muscles. But I still want you to do some, let's do four seconds in, pause, four seconds out, pause. And here's what's important, everyone can do the inhalation not many people finish the exhalation. Get all that residual air out. We don't need that residual air. I do want you to keep it in for a bit because there is a reason why you keep or maintain carbon dioxide for a few 
seconds in the body. We do use it as a buffer. I just don't want it to stay in your lungs. That's like bad gas in the tank, get it out. And then once you get that, try the box breathing. Four seconds in, okay, Emily has it. Four, Anton has it. Box breathing in crocodile position. Four seconds in, hold four seconds. Four seconds out, hold four seconds. Anton, got it. All right, until Emily catches up to the, oh, Emily has it. Let's go back to the four seconds in, pause. Four seconds out, pause. When you exhale, you are going to do a tailbone tuck. So the tailbone is gonna to tuck towards your chin. You will feel your abdominals contract. You don't have to move your hands because I want to give you a, a um, bolster for your forehead with your fingers. But let me know when you tuck the tail, when you breathe out, do you feel your abdominals contract or shorten underneath you? That can be a slight nod, if not just saying, okay, Anton has it. Flexors. Yes, you will. Okay. Especially if your hip flexors are tight mm -hmm. or tight air. Okay. So are you going this way or are you going that way? That's yeah, that's right, that's right. You got it. So everyone feels comfortable with the crocodile breath, box breathing, and abdominal bracing with the tail tuck in a prone or stomach lying, laying, lying, laying position. You feel comfortable doing your box breathing and crocodile breathing, excellent. We are going to progress you to applying breathing to stretches, then eventually fundamental movements. So first thing we're going to do is the bretzel. So you remember the bretzel? Yes. Okay. And if you need this for your head, once you turn, I do not mind. You can use towels, roll towels, bolsters, both knees up in the air, please. We're going to the pretzel. Let's rotate everything to your left towards me. Bring your top knee and bring it to the ground. Bring your back leg and bring it in back of you. Mm -hmm. So back, back, back. Yeah, keep going back. Take that ankle and hold it down to the ground. Ooh. You got a cramp? Of course you did. <laughs> and is a little bit more tight, so we're gonna use some props a block under the knee, and a yoga strap for the ankle. And Anton, you're gonna turn to the right when you exhale, away from me. And when you inhale, you are going to come back. Emily, because she's a little bit more advanced, she's gonna hold the stretch when she inhales. And when she exhales, she's going to turn. Four seconds in, pause, four seconds out. This is the bretzel applying breath work to a dynamic stretch. All right, now we're going into the dead bug flexion component. First, you start with the ball on your belly just to make sure you have nice, good, deep belly breaths. The ball should go up when you breathe in and should fall down when you breathe out as you get that residual CO2 out, out of the belly, out of your lungs. Once you have that, give me the thumbs up. Okay. Now let's have the ball up in the air, hands and knees. <laughs> now, main, see if you can maintain See if you can maintain that breathing pattern. Breathe in, four seconds, pause. Breathe out, four seconds, pause. When you breathe in, big belly breath. When you breathe out, I want you to tuck the tailbone. Once you got that, just nod and put the feet back on the ground and the belly and the ball on your belly for a break. I don't want you to strain your hip flexors or strain your low back. There shouldn't be any pain in your low back. Your hip flexors may get a little bit tight, but I don't want them to feel like they're achy or they're going to be strained or you're straining them or overloading them. You guys got that? Feet down, relax. So level one, when you inhale, relax. When you exhale, squeeze the knees into the hands, hands into the knees, so you're deflating the ball. 
Watch, be careful, Emily, because I don't want your shoulders to raise up. So don't compensate or change your posture in order to squeeze the ball. But now you're tail tucking when you exhale and that's gonna fire the abdominals. So you get that automatic abdominal bracing. That's level one of the dead bug with a focus on flexion. Ball down, relax. Stage one of the dead bug with the focus on flexion is get the ball back up, get your breathing tempo, and when you inhale, one body part should leave the ball about six inches. And remember, the other three are going to pin the ball. Come back. When you breathe in, lift away. When you breathe out, exhale deeply and tuck. Big belly breath when you come away. That should be the foot. Just the foot. Uh -huh. And when you come back, tail bug, tail tuck, tailbone tuck, get that abdominal bracing going. So it's going to be hand, hand, foot, foot. Inhale when you move out. Exhale when you come in. There's that tailbone tuck. There's the abdominal bracing. And as you get more, as you get better with this, you can leave the ball. You can increase your excursion from the ball. You can go further away from the ball. Come on down and relax. With these, it's really important to time your rest periods because as you get stronger, you can shorten your rest periods also. The next one is going to be the, um, the diagonals. And you press on the exhale. Press on the exhale, yes. Execute on the exhale, initiate on the inhalation. Next level, ball up. And this is going to be lifting one limb away from the ball or pulling one limb away from the ball as you inhale. And the other limbs are pressing and holding, and then you exhale and press everything in. Inhale, four seconds and pause. The other three limbs are squeezing gently. Now exhale, tailbone tuck, push the air out of your lungs and the ball. Let's do the leg, or the knee rather, or the hip. And come back. The stronger you are, the more adept you become with this movement, you can leave the ball you can go further away from the ball, further excursion. Let's rest. Ooh, that is work. And level three, this will be the diagonal pattern. So you hold the ball. Don't worry about how far you leave the ball, as long as the other two limbs are holding it steady. So inhale, opposite arm, opposite leg, move away. And when you exhale, opposite arm, opposite leg, come back and squeeze. Let's do the opposite sides, the other sides. And remember, the ones that are still holding on to the ball, they're pinning the ball, not just holding the ball up, and come back. Ball down. So level one was the squeezes, level two was one limb away, level three was diagonals, and level four, let's go back into the original position with arms and legs on the ball. Get your breathing tempo. Four seconds in, pause, four seconds out. Good, Emily, you're watching your shoulders. Uh-huh. Now, when you breathe, rotate to the side, rotate to the side, so breathe in, Breathe out and come all the way over to the other side. Then breathe in, then breathe out. So halfway over, you're breathing out. Then as you go here, you're breathing in. Get all the air out and start to breathe in. You were holding an abdominal contraction the whole time, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna hold that tailbone tuck the whole time. Even when you inhale, because you're, oh, you have to hold the ball up. And so you're not gonna, even when you inhale, don't let go of that contraction. Now keep your chin tucked a little bit 
a little bit. Anton, again, props are okay. If you don't have a cervical control or alignment, give yourself some props until you are able to maintain an alignment. So this is the last level. So we're adding some rotation to the breath work and breathing and relax. For those of you who don't have a ball and still want to do a dead bug or modified dead bug, let's put the knees and hands up in the air. Get your breathing tempo, belly breathing circumferential, get your tailbone tuck. When you exhale, I want the opposite arm and opposite leg to go away from one another while the other two stay exactly where they are. Same thing as you get the ball, yes and then come back and tailbone tuck when you exhale. The amount of excursion, the, how far you move away, the arm and the leg will be dependent upon how well you can maintain your breath work, how well you can maintain your alignment and how controlled you are. And in order, it's A, B, C. Are you aligned? Are you maintaining your breath work? Do you have great control? So this is the dead bug with a focus on flexion if you do not have a ball. This is also a lot of coordination. There's a lot of coordination involved. And stop. All right, now we're going into the second dead bug, but this is focusing on extension. Emma, you want the band around your feet. Ah. Mm. Ah. Yeah. Band around the feet. It's gonna go around your knees, right. so your abductors, you put medius set, uh-huh. That's harder. Then make sure you keep your elbows glued to the side and down on the ground. When you inhale, Big belly breath, when you exhale, move the knees away, ankles away, and the palms gently away. So an isometric contraction. Even if they don't move, move against them. Inhale, four seconds, pause. Exhale, four seconds, pause. If Don't kill yourself with the band. It should be a little easier to begin with until you get the technique. If your breathing stops, you stunt your breathing, you lose your posture, that's it. Always remember, A, B, C. Get your alignment, get your breathing, and then control your movement. If you screw up, F up with the A, B, or the C, stop the exercise. Come down and relax. Just feet go down on the ground. Did you feel that now on your extensors versus your flexors? Yes. Okay, the next one you're gonna go up and rotate. So this is the this is phase two of a second dead bug where we, we are focusing on extension. So let's hold that isometric contraction against the force of the band. So open up the ankles gently, open up the knees gently, keep your elbows down on the ground if you can, and then open up the palms while the elbows squeeze. I'll uh, bring the palms away from one another gently, wrist in neutral, so you don't have to extend the yep. And Emily, for you, I'm gonna ask you to gently bring the shoulder blades back down to the ground. Yes. Now, while you're breathing, with your tempo, rotate. Mm -hmm. Inhale. Now start to exhale. Halfway through, you're gonna to start to inhale. Mm -hmm. And the object is to try to keep your face in line with the chest, in line with your navel, in line with the knees, in line with the feet. Your ankle's a little bit close, Anton, but you have a really hard band, that's fine, don't worry about it. So you're trying to maintain alignment with your breath work. A, B, C, alignment, breath work, control the movement. You will be shaky at the end, that's the weakest part. What you're doing is after a couple of weeks, can you go further, and also does your right equal your left? Can you go as far on your right as you can your left without, oh nice Anton, without um, messing with your breath work, tempo, or your alignment. Come down and relax. Woo! That was good. So we're going to, again, incorporate our breath work technique, bracing tempo with another stretch. This is a yoga position called cat cow or cat camel, or camel cow, or lizard iguana. What you're gonna do, find your neutral by arching your back and round your back. Everyone has a different neutral. Once you find it, just thumbs up or nod, or do a mule kick, whatever. Okay, Anton, you're gonna maintain that. Now, get your breathing. When you breathe in, 
big belly, the belly drops towards the ground. When you breathe out, I want you to do a little bit of a tail tuck at that bracing arm. And this is the easiest one. You want to do cat cow. When you inhale, belly gets big and you drop the block towards the ground. When you exhale, the block goes towards the ceiling and you do that tailbone tuck. You're going to, you're going to feel your abdominals bracing or tightening or shortening. So we're incorporating breath work with movement. You do that automatically anyways, Emily, because of your training. I want to make sure you're breathing from the belly, you're breathing laterally, you're breathing into the back, and you're also getting that tailbone tucked to get your abdominal bracing in, and you're also using the bottom part of your column and core, your pelvic floor muscles. When you exhale, I want one arm, your right arm, to go up straight towards the mirror. When you inhale, bring it back, and then switch arms. Inhale. When you exhale, lift the left arm straight up. The block should not move, so you have to abdominally brace. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, donkey kick. Remember the tailbone tuck, brace. When you breathe out, donkey kick. That's the way to work in tandem. <laughs> it's okay. And now the left. So that's level one of bird dog. Let's do opposite arm, opposite leg. trying not to spill the glass of wine on the yoga block. Very good. Come back into that quadruped or all four position. Good. Good. <laughs> really good. Pretty energized. Yeah. Very energized. Oof. I was sleepy before. 